I'm Michael Fox and this is the Prospector News Podcast and we are on location at the Current Trends in Mining Finance Seminar that's being put on by the New York chapter of the SME and joining me I have Paul Colley the CEO of Phenom Resources. Welcome Paul. Thank you Michael. Great to see you. You bet. It's yes. nice to be in the same room when not doing this over the, the telephone isn't it? It is, yeah. Uh, it's been a good conference and uh, amazing. Yeah, great lot, agenda. It is, and lots of good contacts here, so uh, it's been uh, worthwhile. For those people who don't know your company, let's give them the elevator pitch and tell them who you are. Okay, yeah, Paul Cowley, I'm an exploration geologist, president and CEO of Phenon Resources. We have a, a, a project that we've been focused on in Nevada for the last six years. It's, a, uh, it's got a, uh, two really wonderful appealing stories to it. One is a, a green energy uh, a story, and one is a gold story. Uh, both are, are uh, it, um, the, the vanadium one is a, is advanced stage. It's, a, it's the largest, highest grade vanadium resource in North America. Uh, it's at surface, uh, open pinnable. Uh, and for those that aren't familiar with vanadium, it's, a, it's a, an alternative battery technology um, to lithium for the large capacity battery market, which is going to be a huge market um, that's going to develop over this decade and going and beyond. That, yeah, it's used for energy storage off of wind and solar Correct. generation as opposed to like uh, EVs. Uh, an EV right. type of thing. So, exactly, yeah. Yeah, it will be uh, definitely going forward because uh, the lithium batteries are suspect in that type of an environment. There's, limit, there's a lot of limitations. The vanadium battery is superior in many, many respects in longevity and safety. Um, price now uh, with, with lithium and other metals that are associated with those batteries are more expensive now. So the vanadium battery is, is cheaper, but much, much better performance. And that, and that what's interesting to note is uh, everybody's eye has been on lithium because that's the, the topic of EVs, but this other market is, by the end of this decade, it's going to be double the size of EV. And there's really, there's not enough lithium to supply the EV space alone, let alone, you know, so vanadium is, is, going, to be, uh, is going to be the metal of, of the future for storage. I, I often wonder, just as while we're on the macro discussion, uh, we're seeing more and more solar panels in my neighborhoods up in Prince Edward Island in Canada. Right. And the interesting thing is that nobody seems to have battery power into their homes. So when you know night comes, they're going back onto the grid. So yeah, there's a definite benefit there. But if they were storing that, that, that power, um, they would probably be able to power their home strictly off the solar rather than uh, ever having to tap into the grid, or at least not as frequently. Uh, do you see a day where there could be a, a small vanadium style battery system attached to homes with solar power? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's definitely a wave of the future. This is for microgrids, for our small communities like, say, a, a cul-de-sac of new developments where they all have solar panels on the roofs and a single uh, vanadium or, or you know, several vanadium batteries that collect all their energy during the daytime uh, and then use it at night. So the, that's, that's, that's one application that's used in, in big solar fields, wind, wind farms, um, and in, in major grid um, energy usage. Uh, it, it modulates the, the peaks and valleys and helps uh, uh, as backup power for major grids. So this is an industrial size application and uh, and these projects are, are lar very large and consume a lot of vanadium for e any one project alone so this is going to be a disruptive going forward in that uh, the world as it le electrifies and builds these projects they're going to need a lot more vanadium that that then is being produced and and what's interesting to note is that the forecasts are that we'll we'll need by the end of this decade we'll need to have the world will need to produce it at least double the amount of vanadium that is being produced right now and the suppliers or the, the producers cannot keep up with that. So there's going to be new uh, new sources that are going to need to be mined and, and ours being in, in uh, the U.S., the largest and richest in, in the U.S., it's a geopolitically very, very attractive uh, uh, deposit uh, and resource um, and it's going to, we believe, it's going to be the cornerstone vanadium mine in the U.S. Uh, it, this decade and beyond. 
Yeah. Wonderful. It's good to know, and it's important that we have these uh, types of supply chains in our own backyard, so that we're not relying on uh, on other areas. I know, when talking with uh, some of the uranium producers, uh, that supply chain gets. Uh, blocked because a lot of the enrichment happens in Russia, which is under sanction right now. So uh, having a, a supply chain right in the United States backyard is a good thing. So 2022 is a busy year for your company. You guys oh, accomplished a, a ton of stuff. Let's, yeah. uh, let's go through last year's accomplishments. Well, yeah, we, we did, uh, we were focused, uh, we split our, our efforts between the vanadium and the gold target on this, uh, on this property. So we, we did further expansion of the resource from what we'd already established back in uh, 2019. We could see that the deposit is bigger, uh, and so we uh, and we see that it's still open ended. So this year we're going to be doing further work, and by the end of the year, hope then to produce a, an updated resource calculation that that's that's bigger than what we put into the PEA. We also uh, did further work on our on our gold testing. So this is driven by and, and guided by Dave Matthewson, who's a legend in in, uh, in gold in the Carlin trend in, in discovering deposits. Um, he's probably one of five in the world that understands these deposits. Uh, and uh, so he's he's directing us and um, and we're we've defined this deposit this uh, this gold system underneath the vanadium resource. This this would be say a thousand feet or three three hundred meters below the vanadium resource. This would be an, an underground operation if, if we could find a, a resource. Um, and, and, and there's a big system of, of because we're in, in the Carlin trend, and this is this is a country of uh, or an area of monster deposits. We're in the right stratigraphy for that, the right kind of system um, indicators, and we're trying to find the root, the, the high grade root system that um, that uh, is um, the uh, the foundation of this big plume of of gold system that we've been drilling. So we're we're vectoring towards that high grade. A root system that can be sort of a half ounce ounce type of of uh, grades um, that's always the money rock in in the Carlin trend even though people believe that or think that uh, the Carlin uh, deposits are all about low grade it's all about the low grade was you know covered their costs but the money rock was in the root systems and so we did two holes last year we got so much closer some uh, stronger indications in every way of, of all the parameters that Dave sees is important uh, in, in getting closer to these root systems. Uh, and so that's what we're going to be doing this year as well, is, is continue that effort to get that much closer and hopefully we get that ore grade intercept, uh, gold, gold intercept. So we're doing resource expansion on the, on the vanadium resource uh, and looking to do a, a discovery hole on the gold, a gold opportunity underneath. As well as um, uh, doing engineering uh, studies that will prove that the capex and, low, and the opex will be lower um, than what was in the in the PEA. That's going to be obviously important. Um, the vanadium world is, has changed um, now that we see China uh, adopting these vanadium batteries in a big way. So the macro environment of, of the vanadium battery is is we've been talking about for five years, now it's actually being commercialized in a big way in China. The rest of the world is, is, uh, is uh, finally adopting to that too. So we're on, a, on an up, uptick on, on the vanadium. So that, that macro is important too. So that's why we're working on both of those efforts. The, the vanadium resource expansion and, and moving towards the pre-feasibility uh, is, is our efforts on the vanadium side, but also we've got that, that uh, um, that bonus opportunity for, for shareholders by, by making a, a, a high-grade gold intercept and potentially finding a resource underneath, a gold resource underneath the vanadium resource. I see. Now looking way, way far down the road, does that present challenges when it comes to time to actually do the mining of the, uh, of the resource? You have all this vanadium above the gold. Is it a different set of mining skills needed to get the vanadium than the gold? Yeah, yeah. They're 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 physically separated by hundreds of meters, so three three hundred meters. So physically, the you know you've got an open pit that can operate quite independently of an underground operation. 
and different different skills. So we could uh, we could sell one asset to pay for the other to go into production, for example. Uh, but they, yeah, they could actually be uh, operated simultaneously because of there's a physical separation between the two. That that'd be unique to have two mines operating under the same footprint, wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, it would be yeah, very unique. Yeah. But interestingly enough, the only time, only place that I know of where there's a vanadium concentration above a gold deposit is in the Carlin Trent, and it occurred at Gold Strike, which is a 60 million ounce gold deposit, and at Gold Quarry, which is a 40 million ounce deposit. So this is a very unique. So this is a this is a trend of of uh, monster gold deposits, but it also is a of vanadium deposits. And very, very unique to to Nevada. It's it's the highest grade. You you find other deposits of vanadium in in Nevada, but they're much lower grade. I see. So it's quite unique uh, geologically and interesting. Yeah. Is that going to present uh, additional challenges when it comes time to exploiting the resource? I don't think so. No. Yeah. And the, 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 that physical separation is. Uh, it's the key to is, to is keeping key. it uh, yeah. separate. Okay. Separate. Yeah. Cool. So we've had a good year in 2022. Yeah. You've alluded to some of the plans for 2023. Yeah. What are we doing in 2023 to move this project forward? Yeah, so uh, as I mentioned, we're going to be doing further drilling to expand the, the vanadium resource. We're going to drill for the uh, gold to, to get a gold, uh, uh, high grade gold intercept. Um, we're also uh, working, uh, applying to the US government because there's a lot of money available for critical metals. Uh, these days, from various bills in this in the Biden administration, uh, uh, and uh, so we've applied for 100 million dollar grants. These are opportunities for bringing up bringing down our capex, and and become a partner basically of the U.S. government, support by the federal government in a way. So that's another thing that we're working on. We're also we realize that that now is a time um, to acquire other vanadium opportunities under our umbrella. So there's a couple of other vanadium, uh, two or three other vanadium opportunities that we're looking at that we hope to close this year as well. So that'll be a, another benefit for for our shareholders. Um, and uh, we're also talking to vanadium battery manufacturers on some working relationship there that benefits uh, ourselves going forward, either uh, um, offtake agreements or some other. Uh, benefit for for, uh, for both parties. That's good. That's yeah. always Forward good to have a, a yeah. place to sell the uh, vanadium once you start to mine it. So. Right. Yeah. Perfect. The pro the plans for twenty twenty three are they funded? They are right now. Uh, well, at the at this point we have uh, uh, about three hundred thousand dollars in the kitty. Uh, we've got warrants that will be coming in. Uh, we believe that it will come in by the end of June. That'll bring in another 1.8 million dollars. That'll give us, uh, we still fund us. Um, we'll probably still, because we have ambitious plans for the rest of the year, like to top up a little bit more on that. So there, there, there may be a, there probably an opportunity for a private placement. But obviously, we'd like to make some make some news before that and and uh, and raise that money at a higher price. No, definitely, higher price is always yeah. better for the. For the dilution and the shareholders, so yeah. um, major shareholders in the company. Uh, yeah, we have uh, Rob, Rob McEwen as oh. a major shareholder. Uh, he owns uh, uh, under just under ten percent. Um, uh, Ross Beatty is a shareholder. Um, uh, Eric Mashinsky is a shareholder, and his network of people with a gold investment letter under Eric Mashinsky's uh, uh, subscribers. They probably own about forty percent of the company, 40, maybe 50 percent of the company. But we're, our shareholders are, are retail. Uh, there's some smaller um, funds that are in, in from Europe, um, but mostly a retail investor, higher net worth individuals. But reasonably uh, tightly held. Reasonably tightly held, yeah. Good. There's probably, you know, yeah, uh, 50 or 60 percent uh, tightly held within uh, a smaller group of people. Wonderful. If people yeah. want to learn more about the company and follow you guys, how would they do so? Yeah, we've got our, webs our website. It's uh, very accessible. So that's uh, phenomresources.com. Um, you can reach me, reach out to me on my cell phone as well. I'm always approachable by by our investors uh, or or by uh, email, uh, pcowley at phenomresources.com. 
Wonderful. Yeah. It was a pleasure having you on and you getting people. brought back up to speed yeah. with uh, with the activities over the last year. And I look forward to the uh, what's coming in 2023. Yeah, it's going to be Thanks a good Thanks very much, Paul. Thank you, Michael. Bye-bye. The Prospector News Podcast is for educational purposes only. The opinions expressed are those of the participants and are not to be taken as investment advice. Listeners need to do their own due diligence and seek advice of a licensed investment advisor.